So previously in our Poppy Playtime character concept series, we've been looking into the characters of the Forgotten Critters. Ever since our main protagonists fell down into the depths of the factory, they've been trying to get back to the surface. But along the way, they've encountered numerous deadly characters that have tried to stop them. Throughout their journey, the most troublesome character they've met has been Bull Bullino. He's been the main antagonist of this deep dark area, and he hasn't made things easy for the player. But now, after evading all those forgotten critters, they finally have a chance to make it back to the surface. But if it will be a sure thing is unknown. So the player has made it through the large locked door they found in the last video. They manage to sneak past the surprise critter and find the missing key. And now, after walking through a number of corridors, they come across something very promising. Finally, they have found a way back to the surface. This elevator must reach the upper levels. They were sure of it. They press the button and sure enough, it opens up. This was too good to be true, but there was only one way to find out where it goes. They hop in and patiently wait for the elevator to ascend. So far, so good. It seems they were going up pretty high. Before they know it, they'll be back to the surface in no time. As the player lets out a sigh of relief, it's quickly interrupted by a loud bang. Something has landed on top of the elevator. All of a sudden, a sharp mechanical hand stabs right through the metal ceiling. It was Bull Bullino. He's come back for revenge and won't let the player escape. His mechanical hand repeatedly stabs through the ceiling as the player tries to dodge the attacks. The elevator suddenly stops as it sparks and fills with smoke. The player needs to get out of here before the cables snap and they plummet back to the ground. They force open the door and quickly exit. As they do, the elevator quickly plummets back down to the depths with Bull Bullino on top. That was a close one. A moment later and they would have been done for. So now they're higher up than they were before. But unfortunately for the player, this still isn't the surface. And whatever this new area is, they were sure to find out soon enough. As the player wanders around this new area, it seems to be some sort of facility. As to what was conducted at this facility, the player wasn't too sure. But all they know is that there has to be a way out of here so <laughs> What on earth was that? It just came out of nowhere. They didn't even get a good look at it. Whatever it was, it just quickly ran to the vents. The player doesn't have a good feeling about this. They need to get out of here quickly. But little do they know, they were about to meet the next forgotten critter. So the next forgotten critter we're introducing is Axabubble. This cute smiling critter is based on the amphibious animal, the axolotl. Axabubble is a special smiling critter that was in development at the facility. She was one of the only toys that had a unique ability. Instead of spraying scent, she would blow bubbles. These bubbles would be scented and she could produce a whole bunch of them. Axabubble. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. She can't get enough. Bubbles are the answer to everything. Whenever her friends are sad, her bubbles would always cheer them up. There's nothing bubbles can't solve. Scent, peach. Although she seemed like a promising character, Axabubble never made it out of the testing phase. There were too many complications with her design and formula. One of the main issues being that the bubble solution was considered poisonous. So with this in mind, the company never went ahead with mass production. But the original version of Axabubble wasn't too happy with this decision. And instead, she rebelled against all the researchers and caused havoc. The player needs to be careful while walking through this facility. Axabubble could be anywhere waiting for them. Whilst looking around, the player comes across some notes and a VHS tape. Warning, SC-42 has broken containment. I repeat, SC-42 has broken containment. She is considered to be highly aggressive and dangerous. Avoid contact with SC-42 at all costs. She has been seen moving through the air vents. All vents should be sealed and locked off. Avoid movement next to any vents if possible. And lastly, avoid the bubbles. SC-42 can produce poison bubbles. If exposed to said bubbles, employees must seek out the antidote located in Section A3. Be safe and be aware. What on earth are they doing down here? What kind of monsters have they made in this facility? They need to get out of here before Axabubble finds them first. But before they walk any further, they were too late. Axabubble leaps out of a vent and ambushes the player. So this is SC-42. This creepy looking smiling critter has slimy pink skin and stands on all fours. Her mouth is filled with needle-like teeth and her eyes are piercing and hollow. All of a sudden, a green bubble floats out of her mouth. The bubble gets closer and closer until it pops. Immediately, the player is hit with a rush of deadly poison. They can feel it pulsing through their veins. 
They need to get the antidote quickly or else it'll be all over for them. Axabubble evades the player and quickly rushes back into another vent. The player doesn't have much time. They need to find the antidote and quickly. The note said that the antidote was located in A3. So that's where the player is heading, but on the way they need to be on the lookout for Axabubble. They need to avoid any of the air vents around this facility because she'll be waiting there for them. And if they get too close, she'll immediately strike. The player also has to look out for any of the bubbles that are falling from the air vents. If they get a double dose of poison, then it will be all over for them. So after making their way through this area and avoiding all the air vents, they finally arrive at section A3. The player immediately rushes through the doors and looks for the antidote. And luckily for them, there's still one available. They quickly inject it and feel the poison fade from their body. Finally, they were cured, but they still need to be careful. Axabubble is still out there and she could poison them again. Whilst in this section, the player also notices something very interesting. It was another grab hand, only this time it was purple. Huh, this player isn't really sure what this hand does. But regardless, two hands are better than one. So they attach the hand and set out to find the exit. As soon as they step back out into the corridor, Axabubble leaps out of another air vent. And just before she attacks, she notices something. She looks directly at the purple hand and all of a sudden she looks terrified of it. She lets out a shriek and quickly scampers away. Well, that was strange. Whatever this purple hand does, Axabubble sure didn't want anything to do with it. Well, at least she'll leave them alone as long as the player has the purple hand. But now the player continues through this area in hopes of finding a way out. But as to where they'll end up next, what new critters they'll face, and what this purple hand actually does, we'll have to wait and see. So I think that Axabubble would be a really interesting character to add to the Forgotten Critters roster of characters. He would offer an interesting gameplay mechanic in the form of attacking the player through the vents and also poisoning them with the bubbles. I also personally think she has a really creepy and cool looking design for a smiling critter. Axolotls themselves are really interesting looking animals, and I think an axolotl smiling critter would be perfect. And I definitely think this is one forgotten critter that no one could forget. But now let's introduce the next forgotten critter that's lurking around in the facility. And this new character is named Glimmer Glowfish. Glimmer Glowfish was another interesting character that was created here at the facility. She had a unique ability that was different from all the other characters. So apart from being a cuddly plush toy, Glimmer Glowfish also doubled up as a nightlight. She had a special LED bulb in her antenna and she herself also glowed in the dark as well. Glimmer Glowfish, a bright light that shines for all to see. When the way ahead is too dark, she'll light the way forward. Her friends will never be scared when it's late at night. Her light keeps them all happy and safe. Remember, when you're stuck in the darkness, the only way out is to let your light shine. Scent Blueberry So Glimmer Glowfish was another experimental critter here at the facility. She was once considered to be sold as a special edition smiling critter, but that never happened. Unfortunately, the number of experiments performed on Glimmer eventually took their toll on her. In an attempt to make Glimmer's light shine brighter, the Playtime Co. researchers pushed the limits of what they could do. They experimented with bioluminescence. This is a natural glowing occurrence in nature that is truly unique. But when they injected her with the glowing organic substance, things didn't go to plan. Her body rejected it and morphed into something completely different. And ever since then, the whole project was scrapped and Glimmer Glowfish was left behind. Now she dwells in the darkness. And not having anyone to shine her light for, she became one with that darkness. And now a light that was meant to lead the way has now turned into something that would lure in prey. So now we return back to the player. They've traveled a little bit further through this facility. And now they find themselves in what looks to be the power supply area. Most of this research facility was out of power. And in order to get further through it, the player needs to activate the areas that are down. It looks like sections B2, C1, and C2 are down. The player needs to find the correct terminals and turn them back on. In order to find the terminals for the correct areas, they need to follow a series of colored pipes. B2 would be green, C1 would be yellow, and C2 would be red. As long as the player follows these pipes, they should be fine. 
but unfortunately for the player, on the way to some of these terminals, it would be pitch black. There'd be no light source in sight, and the player could hardly see. But luckily, the purple hand would give off a slight glow. It was just enough for the player to see directly in front of them. This would work for now, but definitely they need to turn on the power. All of a sudden, in the darkness, the player can see a strange light. Huh, what was that? Was that another section turning on its lights? The player decides to go investigate. As they get closer, they can see that it is not a normal light. Two eyes appear, then a row of sharp teeth, and then a whole body. The player quickly backs away as this creature tries to take a bite out of them. What on earth was this thing? Its whole body was glowing, and a light on its head was glowing as well. Its body was translucent, and you could see their bones and insides. Whatever it was, the player needs to stay away from it. All of a sudden, Glimmer Glowfish disappears into the darkness, and she would reappear closer towards the player. This wasn't good. The player has to get to those terminals, and quickly. So in this gameplay segment, the player needs to be on the lookout in the darkness for Glimmer. She can appear at any time if the player stands still or gets lost in the darkness. If the player accidentally bumps into her, it would all be over. They would be devoured in the darkness by all those deadly sharp teeth. Eventually, the player comes across the first power terminal. They quickly activate it and move on to the next one. As they make their way there, Glimmer Glowfish will appear more frequently. They would need to do their best to avoid her and not bump into her in the darkness. Also alongside the danger of running into Glimmer, there would also be a number of obstacles the player would have to navigate in the dark. These would be twice as stressful to complete with the thought of Glimmer Glowfish being right behind you. Before they know it, the player has activated the second terminal. Two down, one to go. But now Glimmer Glowfish will be appearing much more frequently. She'll always be on the move, and always be hunting the player in the darkness. If the player takes their time getting to the last terminal, they'll surely be devoured by Glimmer and her rows of sharp pointy teeth. The player reaches the final terminal and activates the power. Now, full power has been restored to this whole area. With all the lights now on, Glimmer's position has now been revealed. With nothing to lose, she begins to charge after the player. Since there was no need to sneak around anymore, she now wanted to eat the player as quickly as she can. So, now the chase is on. The player has to quickly get out of here safely. As they run down every corridor, they desperately try to search for an exit. Luckily, they come across a metal blast door. They quickly rush through and slam the door down right behind them. There was no way that Glimmer was strong enough to break through it. Finally, the player was safe and sound, but they wouldn't be for long. They need to make it back to the surface before any other forgotten critters attack them as well. But as to what will be lurking around the next corner, they could never prepare themselves. And as for who the next Forgotten Critter will be, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think that Glimmer Glowfish is definitely one of the more interesting designs we've made for a smiling critter. I think the idea of her hiding in the darkness and appearing out of nowhere would be terrifying. And the idea of her translucent skin would make her all the more creepy looking as well. The fact that you can see straight through her skin to her insides and bones definitely makes this a creepy character all the way to her core. And now, our main protagonist is about to meet another one of these strange characters. And this one in particular is probably the strangest of them all. So the next forgotten critter character that we're introducing is called Early Worm. As most of you already noticed, Early Worm doesn't have any arms or legs. It's just his head and his long, stretchy body. Early Worm. Even this worm is earlier than the bird. Being early and on time is important. Everyone should pay attention to the clock and try their very best to be punctual. Being late is out of the question. He makes sure all his friends are where they need to be on time. Scent, Green Apple. So, Early Worm's body is completely poseable and stretchy as well. Playtime Co. wanted to design a smiling critter that was different from all the rest. And making a critter with no arms and legs was the way to do it. 
In the beginning, Early Worm looked to be a promising addition to this Smiling Critter's crew, but the extreme changes they made to his body didn't work out so well. Over time, the modifications to Early Worm's body drove him insane. But despite all the painful body modifications, Early Worm was always on time. He was so obsessed with being early that he made his own efficient way of moving around. He tunneled holes all throughout this area of the facility. This way he could quickly and efficiently move around and be on time. But it got to the point where he would remove everything in his way, and everyone. Because in the end, what's most important is being on time. So now we return back to the player. After escaping Glimmer Glowfish, they continue their journey back to the surface. They've made it further into the facility and are nervously awaiting the next evil toy creature to pop out and greet them. And they had a feeling it would be soon. All over this area were large holes that had been dug straight through the concrete surface. They were everywhere. What on earth could have made these giant holes? Like always, the player had a feeling they would soon find out who it was. While walking through this area, the player needs to avoid these large tunneled out holes. If they get too close, they could fall straight through them. Or something could probably jump out and grab them. Eventually they came to a point where they would need to swing over one of these holes. And just as they did, something leapt out and narrowly missed them. The player looks back to see what it was. It was Early Worm, but this was a much more eerie version of himself. And then suddenly, the player sees how he could tunnel through this area with such ease. A deadly mess of sharp teeth and fangs emerged from his mouth. This is definitely not the friendly version of Early Worm anymore. He retreats back into the hole and moves through to another opening. The player needs to be extra careful now. Everywhere that there's an opening, Early Worm could rush through and snatch up the player. And that's exactly what he tries to do. All over this facility, Early Worm would pick his body out and try to get them. There was nothing the player could do. They just needed to wait until he retreated back inside the hole. In some instances, there could be a hole on either side of the walls. And Early Worm would rush through and try to get the player. They would need to wait and pick the right time to walk through. This definitely posed a challenge for the player, and it made getting around this area much more difficult. But the most difficult thing of all was the way forward. Early Worm was smart, and he made a large tunnel in front of the only way to the next area of the facility. He'd be waiting there for the player and jump out and get them if they got too close. Now what do they do? There's got to be a way they can get past Early Worm. Maybe this purple hand can help them out of this situation. Ever since they got it, they've had no idea what it does. When they're in complete darkness, it glows slightly, so there must be something that this hand does. Maybe there's a way they can activate it somehow. The player decides to look around and see if there's anything that can help them. They just need to be careful not to run into Early Worm whilst looking around. Eventually, the player finds something that might be what they're after. It was a purple hand control panel of some sort. The player hasn't seen this before. There mustn't be many scattered around the facility. They place their hand on the panel to see what it does. Suddenly, a sharp surge of energy charges through the hand. The hand is completely glowing now. The player unleashes it as they extend it and touch a wall. And then, the strangest thing happens. It seems to have made a purple portal in the wall. The player can see right through it into the next room. They extend their blue hand and it passes right through. Eventually, the power fades away and the portal quickly closes. It seems they need to charge the hand again to use this helpful power. This gives the player an idea. They knew exactly how they would use it to get past Early Worm. They charge the hand up once again and move back to the way forward. Before they approach the hole in the ground, they activate a portal right above it. The player then walks closer towards the tunnel till Early Worm pops out. He pops out of the hole so fast that his head peeks through the portal. The player now has to act very fast. They quickly disconnect the purple hand and the portal closes. But anything caught in between this portal would cleanly be severed. So this means Early Worm's head is now trapped on the floor above and his headless body falls down into the hole. There's nowhere he can go. Without the rest of his body, he won't be able to tunnel and burrow through the walls. The player has bested him and now they can move on safely ahead. But as to if they'll be safe for much longer isn't certain. 
They need to find the way back to the surface and quickly, because for all they know, their next forgotten critter will be lurking in the shadows. And as to who it'll be next, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think that Early Worm would be an interesting addition to the Forgotten Critters roster of characters. His design is the most unique out of all the characters, and his ability to tunnel throughout the facility would offer some challenging gameplay segments as well. The player would need to keep on their toes and look out for anywhere that he could emerge from. And if they aren't careful, they'll be done for much earlier than they expected. But now the player moves on to the next area of this facility, and with a new area comes a new Forgotten Critter. So the next Forgotten Critter character we're introducing is called Sneaky Stinkbug. This oddly strange smiling critter is exactly what he sounds like. Whereas all the other smiling critters were designed to smell pleasant, Sneaky Stinkbug was designed to smell horrible. He originally was meant to be used as a prank toy. He would be planted amongst some unsuspecting victims, and all of a sudden he would disperse a cloud of horrible stink gas. In theory, this toy seemed appealing to any children who loved playing pranks, and it didn't sound all that bad of an idea. At the time, gross slash funny toys were kind of popular, but the scientists who developed this horrid scent pushed things way too far. Sneaky stink bug. What's that smell? Oh, of course, it has to be the biggest prankster out of all the smiling critters. No one is safe from his stinky smell. Scent, smelly garbage. So it's a little known fact that during times of war, the idea of a stink bomb was actually put into practice. Formerly known as a military grade putricant, this is a substance that smells so bad it would cause enemy soldiers to retreat. And little did the scientists realize that they actually developed something quite similar to that awful smell. And when they tested out the stink spray on Sneaky Stinkbug, the smell was unbearable. It was so bad, it caused the workers to pass out and faint. It got to the point where they needed to clear out a whole level of the facility. So it goes without saying that no one wanted to get anywhere near Sneaky Stinkbug. But it wasn't his fault, they made him like this. But everyone kept avoiding poor Sneaky. It got to the point where he became resentful of all the workers who abandoned him. So he decided to double down and produce as much of the stink gas as he possibly could. If he were to get anywhere near someone, they would choke on the horrible smelling fumes and surely be done for. So the player needs to be careful and avoid Sneaky altogether. Speaking of, we now return back to the player. They've reached another area of the facility and is still looking for a way to the surface. Surely they will be close by now. But in order to reach the surface, they would need to endure something truly horrible. As they get deeper into this area, they suddenly stomp right in their tracks. What on earth is that terrible smell? They hadn't smelled anything quite like it in their life. The smell was so awful, they couldn't quite describe what it was. It was so intense that every part of their body was telling them not to go forward. But they had to. The only way to the next area was just up ahead. But with this awful smell lingering in the air, it just wasn't possible. If they wanted to get any further, they would need to find something to combat this awful smell. While searching around, they eventually come across some of the Smiling Critters scent canisters. There was a number of different scents, and any of them would be better than what was out there, that's for sure. So the player grabs a couple and holds them close to their face. The nice smell slowly dispenses as they walk through the horrible scent. Eventually, a cam would run out and they would need to quickly swap it out for another. Whilst walking through this toxic haze, they can see something hiding in the distance. As the smelly clouds disperse, it's revealed to be a Sneaky Stinkbug. The twisted, evil version of Sneaky was slender and creepy. He had sharp, bony extremities and wore a gas mask on his oversized head. It seems that this was the culprit who was behind this awful smell. All of a sudden, Sneaky runs up to the player and stabs their scent can. The player needs to quickly equip another can as the horrid smell re-enters their nostrils. Now, they were only down to a couple of cans. If they want to make it through this area, they need to be careful and avoid Sneaky Stinkbug at all costs. Here and there, he would sneak up on the player and try to take their can away from them. When the player sees him, they would need to quickly keep him at bay with their grab hand. They can't let him get close, or else he'll steal another one of their pleasant smell canisters, and the player would be stuck right in the middle of this awful smell. 
they wouldn't be able to breathe, and they would surely run out of air. The player is almost out of this area, just a little further and they would be free. They were eventually down to their last scent canister. They need to move quickly and get out of here, but all of a sudden, Sneaky Stinkbug appears out of nowhere. The player quickly strikes him in the face and breaks his precious gas mask. Now Sneaky was well and truly angry. He quickly runs away and prepares to attack again. Now he'd be attacking the player more often and faster than before. They just need to be quick and keep him at bay with their grab hand. Eventually the player can see the exit in sight. They just need to keep fending off Sneaky and get out of here before the scent can is empty. Finally, with one last step, they reach the exit doors. They quickly activate the blast door and seal off Sneaky and all of his horrible odors. That was a close one. The player just made it out right before their scent can ran out. They make their way to the next area and ready themselves for whatever comes next. And as to what that will be, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think that Sneaky Stinkbug would be an interesting character to add to the roster. I think the idea of a horrible smelling character would be pretty interesting to explore. This could definitely open up a lot of different gameplay elements as well, and a new dangerous slash humorous threat to the player. And I think that Sneaky Stinkbug would definitely leave an impression on the player, that's for sure. With the character having to avoid another gaseous character with Catnap and his red sleeping gas, I think it would also be fitting to avoid Sneaky Stinkbug and his green smelly odour as well. So in the end, I think this would definitely keep things interesting and keep the player on their toes. So now let's introduce our next Forgotten Critter character. And this character is known as Peculiar Pangolin. This is a smiling critter who is modelled after the strange and peculiar animal, the pangolin. Peculiar Pangolin, a refined gentleman and also quite peculiar. Dressing your best is always important and being unique is also great. Master all of these and you'll be the talk of the town. Scent Bergamont. So this little gentleman pangolin wasn't a long lived project. If anything, he barely made it into the concept phase. It seems that a lot of children had no idea what a pangolin even was. So this being the case, he was never made into a mainline character. But he was okay with that. He didn't mind at all. He was just happy to be considered in the first place. But regardless of him not being chosen, this little pangolin still hung around. He was simply called Pangolin by all the researchers and workers, and he would help around the facility and make himself useful. He would clean up the labs, bring the workers coffee, and sort out all the other odd jobs. But his most useful skill of all was picking locks. That was the main reason the scientists kept Pangolin around. If they ever forgot their keys, he would be there to pick the locks and open the doors for them. It was quite a useful skill and was a major convenience as well. But sadly, when all the workers abandoned the facility, they left poor Pangolin behind. But he didn't seem too phased by that. Regardless if the workers were there or not, he just kept going about his day and doing his work. So every day he would continue to clean up and sort everything out. Pangolin just wanted to be useful, even if there was no workers to be useful for. But little does he know, he'll be useful once again very soon. So now we return back to the player. They've been searching around this whole area for a way back to the surface, but so far they've had no luck. But eventually that luck was about to change. As they enter one of the rooms, they get the bone chilling feeling that someone is here with them. And as they can see, they were right. They can see some sharp claws hiding around a corner. The player readies themselves to face whatever twisted creature is coming up next. And who knows what evil creature this will be. Regardless, the player will be ready. The creature emerges from the shadows and faces the player. Um, was this creature holding a coffee? It waddles over towards the player and gives them the beverage. The player accepts, but the coffee cup was empty. Regardless, it's a nice gesture. The player gets a look at this friendly little fellow. It turns out his name is Peculiar Pangolin, or just Pangolin for short. It seems this forgotten critter is in fact another friendly creature. That's a major relief for the player. Pangolin realises that the player was looking for a way out of here. So he leads them through a series of doors and hallways to get them closer to being free. These doors were all locked up tight. There was no grab hand switches to unlock them, and they had no charge in their purple hand to make any portals. All of these doors were just traditional locks, but not to worry, locks were Pangolin's specialty. With his claws he was able to pick the locks and open them all for the player. 
This little guy was very helpful indeed. Out of all the smiling critters the player has met, Pangolin seems to be the most docile and friendly. So door by door, the player and Pangolin make their way through the facility. The player is very glad that they have met this charming little critter. He's been a big help, and it was honestly a great change of pace not to be running for their life just for once. But Pangolin would only travel so far with the player. There was a large metal door that needed a number of locks to be picked. The player would have to help out Pangolin by pulling over boxes so that he can get up higher and unlock the other locks. Lock by lock, Pangolin uses his claws to pick each one. This was a skill that he was quite proud of, and he knew he was a very helpful asset to anyone who needed him. Finally, all the locks on this big door have been picked, and the door swings open and the player and Pangolin are free to advance. But like we said, Pangolin will only go so far, because what lies beyond this door is far too dangerous for him to encounter on his own. Something truly ferocious and out of control is back there. Pangolin warns the player about the dangers, but the player has no choice. They need to take it head on in order to exit this place and get back to the surface. So the player says goodbye to Pangolin, and Pangolin does the same. Although this wasn't a stressful or dangerous encounter, he still proved to be a very helpful companion. The player is glad they have met Pangolin and really appreciate the change of pace for once. But now they have to press forward and take on whatever lies ahead, and whatever it was, they'd be ready. So I think that peculiar Pangolin would be a great character to add to the Forgotten Critters roster. Although he's quite a simple character, I think that it would be a welcome change. He would offer some peaceful and relaxing gameplay in a very hectic and chaotic game like Poppy Playtime. He's certainly a true gentleman and is willing to help out any way he can. So ever since our main protagonist fell down into the deep dark depths of the factory, they've been on quite the journey to get back to the surface. After every area they've travelled through, and every forgotten critter they've encountered, it's finally come to this. They've reached the final area of this underground facility. Right before them is a large metal door that leads to their only hope of getting out of here. Behind the door is a large service elevator that leads to the surface. The factory used this elevator in the past to transport all the research equipment down into the depths. But now the player has a chance to ride this elevator back up to freedom. Well, they'll still be inside the factory, but they'd be out of this subterranean nightmare. Unfortunately, the large metal door was locked tight. There are three red lights that are indicating the elevator is out of power and can't be used. So it's up to them to locate the three generators in this area and restore the power to the service elevator. So the player sets off to do exactly that, but they can't help remember what was said to them before they got here. That friendly pangolin a few hours ago warned them that something dangerous was lurking down here. But regardless, the player has to push on if they want to get to the surface. But as to what this danger will be, they'll find out very soon. So the next forgotten critter we're introducing is called Rowdy Rex. So, Rowdy Rex was a smiling critter that was modelled after the king of the dinosaurs. In fact, he was the only dinosaur critter that Playtime Co. created, and this in turn makes him quite a unique character. Rowdy Rex. With a restless and rowdy nature, there's no keeping him still. He's always roaring to go and is up for anything. Whatever it is, he can take it on and rip into it. Scent Fruit Punch. So, hence the name, Rowdy Rex was quite the energetic character. So much so, that he was quite a handful for the workers. He'd destroy anything and everything, and would play far too rough with anyone who came close to him. The company decided that this toy was far too reckless and chaotic to be sold to the public. Like the others, he was left here in the facility. With no one to keep him in check, he ran rampant all throughout. This Rowdy T-Rex wasn't slowing down for anything, and that includes the player. And when Rowdy gets a hold of them, they'll need to survive as best as they can, because when it comes to playing rough, Rowdy Rex was king. So the player has found their first generator. It seems they need to connect a series of cables with the blue hand, but in some instances, there would be a metal panel blocking the next power coil. 
so they would need to charge up the purple hand and make a clear portal to reach through to connect it. Once the player solved the puzzle, the generator fires up and the first light turns green. One down, two to go. As they make their way to the next generator, all of a sudden something hits the player and they're sent across the room. What on earth was that? It felt like they'd been hit by a truck. Dazed and confused, they get back up and see what's in front of them. It was Rowdy Rex. He'd gotten far too excited at the sight of the player and whipped them with his tail. Getting hit by something so strong, they were lucky they didn't break any bones. But it looks like Rowdy Rex was ready to play rough again. The player can't take another tail whip. If they do, then surely every bone in their body would be broken. They need to get away from him before he charges over again. And it seems like he won't give up anytime soon. The player thinks of a different way that they can get some distance between each other. So the plan was to use the purple hand to run through the walls. They would wait for Rowdy Rex to get closer and close the portal. He would charge into the walls and knock himself out for a while. This would give the player some time to go find and activate the generators. So after using this technique to get away from Rowdy, they come across the second generator. After connecting all the power nodes and completing the puzzle, the second generator is activated. Another light turns green, and now there's only one left to go. So they continue avoiding Rowdy Rex and make it to the final generator. Once they've activated it, all the lights on the door turn green. It opens, and finally the player can get to the service elevator. But they need to be careful heading back. They would need to look out for Rowdy Rex and dodge his tail whips. In the straight hallway towards the service elevator, Rowdy finds the player. They need to make a run for the elevator before Rowdy Rex gets them. If they stop at all, Rowdy would surely break every bone in their body. They quickly enter the elevator and activate the door. It rolls down just in time to stop Rowdy Rex from barging inside. Finally, the player was safe and sound. There was no way that Rowdy Rex could get inside. And all there was left to do was turn on the elevator and finally get to the top. So they push the button, and sure enough, the elevator comes to life. And now they start moving towards the surface. Finally, after everything that has happened, the player would soon leave this place behind. They've been through a lot, and they've encountered some strange toy creatures in the process. Some have been good, but most have been pretty bad. But now, that was all behind them. All they have to do is wait for the elevator to reach the top, and they could get back to the surface. But it couldn't be that easy. It just couldn't. Surely one last problem was bound to arise. And sure enough, right on time, the play was proven correct. All of a sudden, something crashes down onto the service elevator. It was Bull Bullino once again. But this time, he was more machine than Critter. Was this what happened to him when he fell from the last elevator? Bull Bullino explains to the player exactly what happened. After he and the elevator came crashing down, he was left in a bad way. Luckily for him, he was granted one last blessing from the prototype. Bully was given even more mechanical improvements and was truly new and improved. He was told this time he needs to finish the job. If Bull Bullino fails again, the prototype won't be there to save him. And they won't accept failure for a third time. With his new and improved body, he would surely be able to take out this troublesome player. But little does he know how determined the player really is to get back to the surface. So now, it all comes down to this final moment. The final showdown. The player needs to be careful when taking on Bull Bullino. They can't afford to have another elevator crash back down to the depths. If they're going to end this, then they'll have to end it swiftly. So Bull Bullino wastes no time attacking the player. He charges over and swings his mechanical hand at them. The player dodges right on time and evades the attack. Unfortunately, their purple hand is completely out of charge. They won't be able to make any portals to trap Bully inside them. But they came up with another idea. They noticed the multiple screws in Bully's mechanical legs. If they dodged at the right time, they could quickly take out each of these screws. It was worth a shot, and they had no other option. So whenever Bully attacks the player, they quickly duck under and take out a screw. It worked. A couple more, and those legs are sure to come undone. So every time, they would lead him in for an attack, and then dodge and quickly take a screw. Screw by screw, they were almost done. Eventually, Bull Bullino goes for another strike with his metal hand. 
but all of a sudden, he falls to the ground. He's left laying there in a jumbled pile of mechanical legs. The player has finally done it. Bulbulino has failed to take out the player. Without his mechanical legs, he isn't quick enough to get the job done. So he just lies there defeated. Bulbulino becomes so enraged that he attempts to attack the player one last time. Just as he tries to leap towards the player, their purple hand sparks back to life. It glows brighter than it ever has before. It's almost like it has a mind of its own. It quickly makes a portal right under Bulbulino and he falls right through it. Finally, it was over. There's no way he's coming back from a fall that high. The purple hand starts to spark up and malfunction. It seems that was all the juice this thing had. Oh well, it looks like they'll have to find another hand. Suddenly, the elevator stops and the doors open up. The player steps out onto the surface level of the factory. Finally, they had made it. It's been some time now, but they're back to where it all began. They've had quite the delay, but now they're back to their journey through the Playtime Co. factory. The player doesn't want to see another smiling critter as long as they live, and hopefully they've seen the last of them. But as to if this is truly the case, we'll just have to wait and see.